Welcome to our program on Kardec Radio. Hello, dear friends. This is Kardec Radio and the Spirit of Society of Virginia together working to bring to you the spirit center that you may not have around, especially now due to the pandemic. Many people ask if we're closed. Of course not. We're here super open and working probably harder than we've ever been. And it takes an effort and a lot of discipline on everybody, all of us, both ends, to join in. We know it's much harder to be at home and stop a routine to bring the spirit center home, though it's just a click away. Because we know we need to discipline ourselves, but it's an effort that pays off. It's like when you cook, you need to make an effort to have a decent meal. Rarely, we're just going to buy pre-made stuff and be as healthy as if we were cooking homemade food. So the same happens for us, the effort that we make to nourish ourselves as spirits, to do the proper cleansing, the hygiene of our minds, and also to exercise everything that we have been learning. Today, we are going to open the online spiritual care with a message that Kara Correa is going to read for us. Right, Kara? Right. The message we're going to read is from the book Our Daily Bread by Emmanuel through Chico Xavier. The number of the message is 113 entitled Your Faith. Then he said to, to her, daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Jesus. Luke 8, 48. Emmanuel comments. It is important to notice that having dispensed beneficial assistance, the divine master always referred to the wonder of faith, the sublime heritage of those who seek him. On many occasions, we hear his expressive affirmation, your faith has saved you. After experiencing relief or healing, the infirm in body and soul hear the generous pronouncement. This is because human will and trust are powerful factors in the development and illumination of life. Navigators who have no route to follow and who have nothing to trust will only reach port because random forces are on their side. Patients who are skeptical about the effectiveness of all medication are the first to work against their own well-being. Those who are disenchanted with everything do not expect anything to be useful. Empty souls clamor in vain for the share of happiness they think the world owns them. The state of denial in which they wander transforms their lives into deadened zones that resemble electric insulators. The life-giving current may pass through them, but they remain insensitive. Amid the enterprises and needs of your pathway, do not insulate yourself in negativity. Jesus can overcome anything and your true friends will do everything possible for you. However, neither the master nor your friends can provide you fully with the happiness you seek without the aid of your faith, because you are also a child of the same God and have the same potential for spiritual growth. 
Thank you, Carol. As Emmanuel brings to us these encouraging words, let's not forget that we are on earth to learn the new, to overcome our own resistances, and to do better than we've been doing. There's always better. And that's not pressure. It's an actual encouragement. So let us pray as we gather together to form a current of healing light. So wherever we are in the world, we may be receiving the visit of the good spirits, the spirit doctors, the nurses, the therapists who mercifully come to our aid. Dear God, we know that there are forces of the good promoting our wellness, sustaining our lives. But on the other hand, we understand that there are many forces hindering us because we deep inside have not made the actual choice of moving into the light. Often we are conflicted souls We may dream of peace and happiness, but cultivate misunderstanding, cultivate lack of solidarity, and many more things that are not healthy for us. Creating connections that are true associations with evil, not for major crimes, but still they are. Crimes before your love, love. So we would like to adjust ourselves in this hour, bringing to consciousness everything we have kept in the back burner of our hearts. We want to take the most of this life because we know when the bell of death rings, there is no time to do what we haven't done because you'll be inviting us to close a chapter and prepare for a new beginning. We've been there, done that for many lives. That's why many of us are afraid of death. Don't have a good relationship with this angel that really brings us back to the spiritual homeland. But what is our spiritual homeland with you if we haven't been building up the house in your kingdom with the bricks of love and peace, creating misunderstandings and criticism inside of our minds and giving no chance to people to partake in the dreams of a new society. May the lesson you bring us today be the true remedy that we need and the clarification for things we haven't understood or seen this far. Asking for your guidance because we know that the good only comes from you. Begging for your protection because we understand how fragile we still are. We're delighted, deeply rejoiced in receiving your
permission to begin this healing service for the mind and the bodies. And so be it. All right. So now we have Daisy who will be showing to us, right, Daisy? Yeah. The new lesson from Jesus in the home, the four tasks, what are they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Vanessa. So friends, we're continuing studying this beautiful book, Jesus in the home. And yes, today we're talking about the four tasks. So we, as we study this book, we remember the gatherings, the very intimate gatherings with Jesus and the disciples in Simon Peter's home, very similar to this picture so that we can transport ourselves there and imagine Jesus telling us these stories and this profound teaching. So in this particular evening, the conversation was around the soul's faithfulness to the Almighty Father. And then in response to the expression of joy radiating on everyone's faces, Jesus told them the following story. In the old city of Nevida, there was a man who was deeply devoted to God, that all of his contemporaries held him in particular high esteem. He was praised by his behavior and he was lavished about the news, the news of this faith that he had rose up all the way to the eternal throne. And the archangels, they were asking the Almighty why they could not bring him to heaven with them because he was a very faithful man. However, the divine wisdom gave them the order to sort out in the jungle of the flesh in order to determine if he was really eligible to rise up to the heaven. And they gave him, God gave him, gave them a task. He told the teacher, the angel teachers working with him to send four basic detectors of righteous individuals. And we will go through each and every one of them. The first was want, the second was wealth, the third was power, and the fourth was anger. And each one of them came down and visited this man here on earth. The first one was want, which is always the first one to appear in such case. Approach the greater believer and made its presence felt in a number of different ways. By afflicting him with hardships, obstacles, illness, and abandonment by loved ones. This, friends, is us, right? want is has shown here in this picture we ourselves have several want we want a particular social status a position title material assets is a particular trip that we want to take money fame but then life happens and has this man the hardships they come along the ob obstacles maybe is an illnesses Maybe it's a, a, a job that we lost, it's a financial situation. So let's see, what was the response of this man? This devout man, he was full of confidence and he knew that the messenger was a heavenly worker and he defeated this test of the want. And he proved himself by increasing even stronger in his virtues and he became a model for everyone around him. After succeeding once, then he was visited by wealth, and wealth approached him and granted him a very lavish table, vast resources, and all types of social considerations. 
But the foresightful disciple, he remembered that God taught us to be charitable. And he distanced himself from the temptations and from the easy pleasures. He distributed his money and possessions through a number of good deeds. And through this, he achieved financial stability and everyone's admiration. So there, having succeeded in the second trial, he was then visited by the third, which was power. And in now, in this test, he was given illustrious authority. The devout man, however, he remembered that life with all its honors and gifts are merely a loan of the heavenly providence. And he carefully made use of his power by teaching all those around him through instruction and well-guided work. So we are seeing how this devout man was able through his work to overcome now the third test power. And he was very happy, but he was then visited by the last test, which is anger. And this test, it visited him by the form of a weak and an unlearned servant that touched his self-esteem by talking with obvious disregard about a private matter. Although what he said was in fact true, it was constituted by real disrespect through everyone of that social position and inarguable dignity. This time, this devout man could not help himself he was overcome by intense rage. His face was full with blood and he lost control of himself. He said very hurtful words. He wounded family members and servants and undermined everyone around him. It took a few days for him to overcome what he just went through, but by that time, anger had already lay bare in his inner spirit, showing that he still had a lot to work on. So before we finalize with Jesus' words himself, this is an opportunity for each and every one of us. The four tests, want, wealth, power, and anger, at some point throughout our days, we're gonna be visited by at least one of these four tests, if not all four of them, as we go through our lives. And in this story, Jesus is bringing to us that in order for us to rise up, to overcome ourselves, to become pure spirit, we have to overcome these four tests in our lives. But Jesus has a wonderful educator. He comes to us and he brings what is the recipe for overcoming each one of them as we saw with the first one, with want. Jesus says at the end of this gathering with the disciples, the majority of believers lose their apparent good standing when want begins fasting they are moral strength. So how we overcome want? Yes, we have things, we have dreams, we have things that we wanted to accomplish. But Jesus is reminding us that it all lays in our moral strength. If we put God at the center of our lives and the center of everything, we wake up every day and we ask God, God, what do you want me to do today? Instead of us seating them and saying, but, but I want, life is showing one way and we are, no, 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 but I want this particular way. I, and then we start to power struggle with God. And we know God has our mighty father. He is so loving and so caring for all of us, but 
then who are we to be in this power struggle with God, right? So to overcome want, we need to strengthen our moral strength, to go through the gospel, to read about God's law so that we can be aligned with his divine wisdom. He will show us the way and he will tell us, remember, it's not what we want, but what we truly need in this reincarnation and God will give this to us. Jesus just continues explaining that many become corrupted by the suggestions of wealth, which makes note of their detachment from inferior objectives and their ability to act in sowing of the good. We learn through spiritism that wealth and money are also um, a, a godly send things to our lives. We don't need to repel it away. But the important thing is, is what we do with wealth. And that's what Jesus is telling us and reminding us. Is this detachment for inferior objectives. It's using that wealth. And it might not be only wealth of money. It might be our wealth of knowledge. It's what we do with that. And he's telling us sowing the good going from applying that the selfish way only for ourselves, but thinking about the general good and applying that wealth to everyone around us. And that's how we can overcome the test of wealth. He then continues and say, others fall disastrously due to the insinuations of power, which tries them to their which tries them to test their ability to instruct and protect their companions of human joining. Power, friends, we all have our circles of power. It doesn't mean we're going to be the CEO of a company for us to have power. We sometimes have power within our own families. But then Jesus is reminding us to use that power to instruct, to lead, to be a good leader as he was and he continues to be in our lives instructing and protecting those around us, not that power that put others down. And then he finished by saying that very rare are those who can triumph over an expected visit of anger, which comes into a person's lives to see if they have overcome their vanity. Anger, we learn in the gospel according to Spiritus, is is deeply related to pride because we have these feelings of anger inside of us when our pride is hurt, when things don't go according to plan, when those around us don't have the same opinion. And then we are fulfilled with this sentiment of anger. But then how we do that, friends, right? We overcome pride, right? By being humble by understanding, understanding those around us. They will have their own opinion. They will have their ways of being. But the important is how we feel, how we deal with that situation inside of us. And then Jesus finished by saying, if not, if we don't overcome these four tests, there our spirit cannot reflect the splendor and the grandeur of the creator in the realm of life eternal. So today we are ourselves given these four tests so that we can every day apply to our lives how we can overcome these four tests into our daily lives. So reflecting on that, we'll now continue in our treatment um, through the passes in our final prayer. So let us close our eyes and visualize Master Jesus in front of us, opening his arm to embrace us as we feel his presence We know he cares 
and he loves us so much just by listening and learning about this chapter we trust in master jesus as he comes and embraces healing the wounds of our soul breathing in and out we feel that we are being cured every single wound in the spirit in our body we feel that we are getting better as we open our heart for these teachings for the creator love the healing energy goes through us as love goes through us we feel that we are expanding vibratorily as we harmonize ourselves with master jesus vibration the vibration of love And as we vibrate and emanate love, we can imagine and feel ourselves healed and ready to serve, to help all of those around us, our family members that live with us, our neighbors, our community, all our network, and our universal family. We know this love is so immense that we can share and we can heal everyone that open their heart to receive these blessings. And as we continue to vibrate in this love wave, we keep ourselves elevated and in gratitude, we pray with our master and our dear friend Paloma. Dear loving Master Jesus, we are enormously grateful for all the beautiful teachings you always send our way. The understanding of our emotions, our feelings, and our desires is critical for us to be able to continue towards the journey of progress. Understanding how to deal with our instincts is critical. We are so grateful for the messengers that brought these messages. For the Jesus in the home book, psychographed by Chico, by the spirit of Neo Lucio, brought to us these beautiful images of you teaching the disciples. That is like teaching us. We thank you for sending today doctors and nurses to assist our healing, to assist our family, 
to assist the cleansing of our homes. We are also grateful for our guardian angels that are always with us, protecting us and inspiring us to do the right things. We pray that we have courage and strength to fulfill our mission, to continue doing the good and to being good listeners to your teachers' teachings. We thank you, Master Jesus, always and under your protection and with your permission, we ask to close these moments of prayer today. And so be it. So thank you, friends, for joining us today. Let us keep in mind the remedies that were given to us also at uh, in many dimensions and exercise the teachings that we have been given. If you have any question, if you have a particular need that we can be of assistance, please write to us at cardicradio at gmail.com. We wish you lots of blessings and until next time.